Oh, hell yes, we're back with some Let's Learn StarCraft, and we are talking about Protoss openings and Protoss versus Zerg. In Tuesday's episode, when I was talking about core strategy, I showed a lot of this diagram. And if you haven't seen the Zerg vs. Protoss openings video, watch that. You must see how Zerg opens and thinks to be able to understand and appreciate the way that Protoss should open and think. Uh, and in just as Zerg is going to be relying heavily on Zerglings and Scourge and small numbers of Hydra's early game, the big things that we're going to look at is, one, how to actually stay alive at the start of this game. We'll even see some painful uh, examples of it not working. We're going to see how in Zerg doing the big defense, what are all the offensive opportunities that you have as Protoss, and how... Excuse me, this flows into Dragoons in large numbers to support that pre-existing army. And once again, with openings, these are not ultra-specific, precise build orders of, you know, Hatch 12, Hatch 13, Hatch 27, stuff like that. Instead, this is the conceptual framework of how you step from each of these points to each other. So, I want to begin with kind of the dead, basic, canonical way that Protoss... Uh, is opening at the highest level, which is the early expand involving gateway pressure at the start of the game. Uh, and we will look at the other super basic one, which is the forge early expand as well. There are one base openings for Protoss. They, they totally exist. Don't do them. Just don't. They're actually the hardest ones to do in the game. These are weirdly hard. And I don't mean they're unusually surprisingly hard. I mean they're hard in a specifically weird way, which is that when you die, you generally die in a stupid, abrupt fashion. Right here, we see a pylon and a gateway going down. Remember the rule in Zerg vs. Protoss core strategy? In early game, lings are king. Lings dominate pretty much all else in early game, so every opening involves using buildings as walls. Either pylon here with a gateway and a forge here, or maybe a pylon here with a gateway and a forge and then a cybernetics core here. It's always using the buildings to form a wall because lings are king. So again, you might stupidly, weirdly lose games all of a sudden if you're early expanding. Just due to zerglings flowing in, that's fine. You're doing great. This happens to everyone. It literally happened to Bisu in the three of the games that I was trying to sift through for today's episode. It happens to the absolute best of the best. We're going to talk about how to avoid that and how to counter it in more detail, but I just want to stress early expanding is an easier way to open, even though you might abruptly die sometimes because you're inexperienced. That's totally okay because once you do hold those off, you have two bases of economy and you're in great shape. Just don't one base. Just don't one base if you're Protoss. Those are the hardest, most technical openings that are out there. So, first things first. What is Protoss doing here? Protoss is going for a pylon and a gateway on 10. Specifically on 10 because um, this is the timing where you can build a gateway without ever stopping your probe production. Notice this um, probe is moving out to scout after the gateway gets built. Another pylon gets built in the main very comfortably. A very early built pylon, which is lovely. And then zelts start getting made. Initially, when people see this, they think, oh, this is an early pressure build designed to maybe deal damage. It does a little of that, but way more importantly than anything is that it can scout! You can scout with the zealots! God, you can scout! Listen to me. Any all-in Zerg wants to do to you will get telegraphed early. It will just get shown, as long as you can go over there and look for it. So, zealots coming out. Never forget, zealots are there to scout. First zealot comes out. I'm not going to tell you any fancy timings. Yes, technically the Nexus is going to go down at like 21 or whatever, but you just keep building Zealots and probes. Here comes Zealot 1. Here comes the Nexus, generally right before the second Zealot pops out. Sure, it's at 21. Conceptually, never stop building Zealots, never stop building probes. 
Easy. You might do a few things like cut a probe just to sneak a zealot out earlier. That's totally fine. Now what Bisu's doing is Bisu's trying to get in there. He's trying to scout. He's trying to look. He's trying to see what's in there. What's in there? What's in there? Ah, he's trying to worm his probe in. Things back home are basic. Never stop building zealots. Never stop building probes. And when you can afford it, build a forge. There it is. Extra pylons in the main base. After the forge goes down. Ooh, assimilator. We love gas as Protoss. It allows us to do everything that's cool in this matchup. Probe still trying to get in, 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 still trying to get in. Um, well, there's cybernetics core getting started right away. Right? Right at the moment you can afford it after you've been getting your assimilator, you should get that cybernetics core. You never want to get a cybernetics core before assimilator. You won't be able to do anything with the cybernetics core uh, if it finishes. And you have this interesting reversal where in many early openings you go for the forge and the cannon right away to protect you from zerglings. Notice how clever this opening is in that you both pressured, snuck the forge and the zealots in as a big old wall, and now you're building the pylon behind. So if zerglings come in, we have a nice angle here, we have a nice angle here. You'll also see in production up in this top left, Kind of hard to see, but that's a zealot that's getting built. Still zealots getting built. Still trying to scout, still trying to scout, still trying to scout. What's going on? What's going on? Hard to tell. Hard to see. So, I'm going to note the what that's happening right now. What's Bisu doing? Dude, he's, he's, he's building a Stargate. He's building a Stargate. This is just what you do. You open up with Corsairs so that you can scout, so that you can begin building Corsairs to prevent large mutilous numbers from abruptly killing you. So you can get Overlords. Corsairs are just a good unit. Very good unit. But I, I, I want to note this very important uh, timing thing that's happening right now that's very fluid. This is something that really depends on what you're seeing, depends on how you're feeling. Um, whether you're feeling safe or really comfortable. I would encourage you to do what Bisu's doing here. If I take a step back, technically what Bisu is doing is the normal. One gateway, one forge, one cybernetics core, one stargate to build Corsairs. Ugh. This is the most basic shit ever. Also one cannon and one expansion. And soon enough, a plus one upgrade on the Zealots. Right? This is basic, basic, basic. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that what we're doing is following an obvious sequential list of timings. Bisu's looking at what this probe's doing. This probe sees only four zerglings. It sees that there's no zergling speed. It doesn't see hydras and it's pretty far on zerg side of the map. And so, as Bisu is moving forward, building his, you know, cybernetics core, getting his... Let me just skip ahead. Building his cannon, stuff like this. He's not seeing any signs of threats. If you're not seeing any threats, you know what it might be a good time to do? Send the zealots! Very importantly, this probe stays with the uh, zealots. Because a single probe acts like an extra plus one damage upgrade. This probe's still trying to find cool stuff. I'm sorry, this is another game that he left the probe in there, but, you know, whatever. So this attack's happening. Important thing that's occurring in this attack, the second gas geyser's built. I probably can't stress that enough. So what I do, what I'm going to do is I, I am going to stress it enough. In these early builds for Protoss... And you'll notice I'm pausing and discussing a lot because there's a lot of research that went into this. In fact, for the longest time, um, people just thought you couldn't expand. There's just all this stuff they, they couldn't quite figure out how to weigh against each other and determine and figure out and all this stuff. Um, and, and so here, a really critical thing that people used to mess up is they used to overbuild defenses. They used to over freak out. They used to over get concerned 
and build things with their minerals to defend. More zealots, more cannons. Get the second gas quickly. Get that second gas quickly. What does quickly mean? In this game, after he starts his Stargate. He's basically never stopped building probes, never stopped building zealots. Went for the Corsair as quickly as he could. And then just got the second gas as a big goal. So here's a really cool timing that's super standard. Plus one on the Corsairs. And of course you get the Corsair. That's not super cool. That's obvious. You wouldn't build a Stargate and then not use it. But plus one on the Zealots. Love this timing. It's really cool. You get upgrades for both things. And then you get the Citadel of a Doom. So I'd like you to just feel Protoss fear with me. Feel Protoss fear right now. Protosses for the longest time in their lives went, dude, oh my god, Zerg. Oh, I can't see anything. These Zerglings are denying my vision. Protoss has more stuff than Zerg. Has more workers, has more units, has more everything. Okay? Just does. Protoss is doing great. And what Protoss is doing right now is just exiting this build-up phase. Not a lot of subtlety in Zerg build-up. It's just like, build your damn drones, and then build Zerglings if you need to. Like, there's just not that much subtlety. There was some, but, I mean, I'm saying this as a Zerg player. Most of the time, if I'm the Zerg player, I'm like, oh my god, the Zerg are just the most hard and sophisticated. It's pretty basic as Zerg. There's a lot of traps where you can convince yourself it's complicated as Zerg, but you just b basically build your shit. Uh, but for Protoss, there's a lot of building placement. There's a lot of opportunities to attack where you need to attack. There's that fast gas timing. There's this possibly uncomfortable at first move of getting both upgrade for Zealot and for Corsair, and then the Citadel of Adun. Most Protosses are like, God, dude, wh when am I building units? Well, now's about the time when more gateways get started. Sometimes uh, Protosses will wait until they can build three gateways all at once. Some will build a second gateway super fast to just eke out a few extra zealots. And, you know, Bisu, he's not, he's not an idiot. He's like, no, I, I could actually be threatened, so I'm just going to build a single cannon there. Uh, getting zealot legs right away after the Citadel. Getting the Photon Cannon right away. And, and this is another thing that the two decades of research have figured out. Zealots are just scary, dude. Speed zealots. You know, I know this says Height Templar. I'm literally never going to change that. And you can go die if you want me to change a typo. Corsairs are scary versus overlords. And are great at defending against mutilisks. But you're noticeably seeing everything except the Dragoon here. Research has demonstrated that zealots with speed are just better than everything early game. <laughs> They're just better than everything, man. And so we're going to see in all of these Protoss opener videos how often the Protosses will just do some stuff and then zealot speed and focus on zealots. We're, we're going to see some pretty weird-ass openings too, which is I'm really excited about. Damn it, I'm out of water. Damn. So, conceptually, there are some different ways that Protoss could be doing what he's doing right now. Conceptually, Protoss could be waiting to get speed, and then waiting for four gates. He could be going two gates and pressuring early. There's a variety of different techniques that Protoss can use here. Basically, what Protoss is doing here is sending a Corsair around knowing what Zerg's capable of, and deciding that now is a good time to send the Zealots, even though the plus one upgrade is not done, although it's almost done, and the Zealot leg speed upgrade is not done, although it's almost done. This is a sophisticated-ass timing. And I don't want you to remember this as, oh, every time I'm playing Protoss, I need to attack at 7 minutes and 14 seconds. That's the wrong lesson. The right lesson is if you observe weakness... You are permitted to just send your zealots out because zealots are terrifying.
Zealots just pull back, and these Zealots are going to die. Hmm. Partly because Larva is very good. And, I mean, frankly, I would say, I think Bisu should maybe have waited a little bit. Waited until he had leg speed. Corsair is still being built. What's that cannon doing in the main? Very easy to abruptly die to Mutalisks and Scourge without a cannon in the main. So it's very standard to build that ultra early. Why the uh, Templar Archives? That's the next structure on the list of things. Gateway, Forge, Gas, Cybernetics Core, Stargate, Gas, Upgrade, Upgrade, Citadel of Dune, more gateways, Templar Archives. Here is where a lot of the tactics emerge, and we're going to see a very tactical, virtually identical game to this right afterwards. Here's the advantage that Speed Zealots have. Look at this beauty. Plus one Speed Zealots murdering Zerglings. Look at the mini-map. Suddenly, the Protoss player has all the vision. He's moving across the other side of the map. And in fact, I actually have this from the Zerg point of view. If I actually go to, I think it was 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, look, look, look at the Zerg point of view. Zerg has nothing. Zerg has even Zerglings and Scourge over here, but is so defensive and pulled back that Zerg can't even see anything. Get me out of this. Let me just move back to where we were before. Yeah, great. So basically, Speed Zealot Corsair is getting produced. Not High Templar. Not High Templar. In fact, the Templar Archives is done. You know the bigger reason why the Templar Archives is done? Plus two attack, baby. Plus two attack. And, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I showed you the other game, but apparently, Day 9 of the past thought, I really should show the status that Zerg's in. Despite the fact that Incorrectly, you may conclude that that first zealot attack failed, a second zealot attack failed, and now we're on round three. Ah, oh, things must be going poorly. Let's take a look at what Zerg has. Yeah, Zerg has his hatches, but he has 12 drones here. He has this upgrade, which is great. In the main base, uh, he has 12 drones. There's a glitch having the spire with some weird growth under it. Yeah, it's literally 12 drones in two places. Pretty good drone count, to be honest. Uh, a little less than that. Looks like nine drones. And Hydralisk speed has only just started. This is the entire Zerg army. Three Zerglings, six Scourge. Oh, excuse me, no, four Zerglings. That's all that Zerg has. Zerg has four Zerglings and six Scourge. So, of course, you can move out aggressively with Zealots like this. Zealots scooping out with vision. Why the Quick Templar Archives? For the Quick Plus 2 attack upgrade, not for Stormers or any of that nonsense. Now, with this vision, you can do great things like expand. You don't have to expand, though. Bisu is famous for his swiftness of expanding in this matchup. And I would encourage you to just wait for six gates and then expand if you're feeling uncomfy. We're going to see that in some of the future openers. Templar getting made sort of as the last piece to this puzzle. There's even a single Dark Templar that was produced as this nice utility piece. Oh, Zerg is kind of built. A lot of Scourge and Zerglings, but my... I think it's eight Corsairs right there. Yeah, eight Corsairs moving around the map. Very powerful unit, the Corsair. I want to stress a few things that have happened right now. One is the zealots that marched out and seemingly died without doing anything actually did a lot. Forced Zerg to build tons of Zerglings instead of drones. These Corsairs that seemingly have not done too much, they've only picked off a single overlord here or there, they're not forcing value. They're waiting for an opportunity. They're waiting for these large numbers. Corsairs function way better in very large numbers. And suddenly, Corsairs can abruptly do insane shit. Like, just kill off all these almost immediately.
Templar, almost getting Storm, but plus two attack is on the way. And still Zealots, still Zealots. You see this? Haven't even researched range out of the Dragoons. See how long you spend in this phase? In this big defense phase as Zerg, or the big offense phase as Protoss? Protoss, er, Protoss didn't force it. Protoss didn't sit there with his Corsairs, forcing an Overlord kill, sacrificing himself. Nope. Saw some Hydras, got out of there. You want to conserve those Corsairs. Zealots, you can maybe do some crazy shit with and lose some. That's okay. Don't want to mess around with your Corsairs. Want to keep those numbers high. One of the things that we haven't talked that much about is the robotics facility. If you see lurkers, stop what you're doing. Get a robo. Get observers. <laughs> Chef was going in and out of games. Stop what you're doing, get Observers, get Dragoons, all that sort of jazz. But if you're up against a normal Zerg who's doing the normal thing where Lurkers are later, you can delay that uh, Robotics Facility a bit. But as you're getting Dragoons, you're going to have to get the Observers in order to deal with that. And a question that I get asked a lot is, you know, what are some different tactics that can emerge there? Are you saying, Sean, that I need to go for these exact zealot attacks every single game. This is a different game that uh, Bisu played against Effort. We're going to see the same opening done in a slightly different way. First of all, this pylon placement is very brave. I would have absolutely blocked my Nexus if I were him. Here comes gateway number one. Great. Probe Scout. This is the same opening. Almost the exact same opening, uh, build order wise, compared to the last game. Here is Mr. Drone. Mr. Drone! Turning himself into a big, strong hatchery. That's the Zerg's form of puberty. For me, my voice cracked. I got acne that never went away. Maybe I wish I was Zerg some days. Zelt's coming out. Um, it's, it's a really nice opener, starting with one gate Zealot, because your macro is pretty easy. There's not a lot of thin timings that are going on. You just build the probes. You just build the uh, Zealot's. When you can afford it, and you can always afford it, so you just keep churning them out. And right around 21, Nexus goes down. Notice how much scouting information Bisu's going to get. In particular, Effort did something ever so slightly differently. Effort went for a hatchery on 12 and a pool on 11, instead of going for a pool on 9 and a hatch on 11. Pool on 9, hatch on 11, you get those Zergings out, lickety split, deny the scout, have stuff for this one gate zealot pressure, but if you go hatch first, look at this! Mr. Zealot is so annoying! Oh, is he going to kill anything? Is he dealing damage? Is it worth it? He's scouting, he's seeing the gas timing, another zealot showing up, it's scouting, it's scouting, it's scouting, oh god! Oh, the veil has been lifted, I know exactly what my Zerg opponent is doing, he's building a gas geyser, yes! Zealots, you can pull those back if you start to lose a lot of them. No problems there. But Assimilator goes down pretty quickly. In the previous game, you saw the Forge go down and then the Assimilator go down. You're noticing, uh, I think I showed, let me actually rewind it. Ugh. After this attack, that is a grand total of... Nine drones. There's nine drones alive. And as much as I love the number nine, this is demonstrative of the impact that this has. There's 12 plus 5, 17 probes to nine. Zealot harass is good. Forcing links puts Zerg in a position where he has nine drones. There's the forge. Building that forge is absolutely essential. Why is this probe going out? You need to scout. You need to see. Is there hydras? Are there more lings getting built? What's happening? Zealot's still getting built. No problems. Cybernetics core getting built as soon as money could afford it. A, a cannon getting built as soon as money could afford it. And look at Mr. Probe on the minimap. Look at Mr. Probe heading on in there. Why did I choose to look at this nexus in this video recording for so long? Did I get distracted? Was there a phone call? Okay, cool. Looks like I paused it. <laughs> okay, there's 
There's the Stargate going down. Great. Probe is being very active, trying to see what's up. Why is the assimilator being built right now? Because that's kind of the next big important thing that we built. In a moment, we would expect a plus one to get started soon. Plus one for Aaron for Grant. Let's see, look, these zealots move up. Judge, no, you know what? I don't have enough information with this probe. I'm coming back. I actually want to showcase this, this movement. This scouting probe is so important. See this probe on the minimap? Watch them go. There's the assimilator going down. See the zealots moving out? The probe sees that there's no third base up there. The zealots come back. Do you see that? The probe sees that there's no third base up here. Zealots come back. Zelts are going, uh-oh, uh-oh, am I up against two base? Am I up against some sort of weird all-in and I incorrectly scouted? So the probe, what does Mr. Probe do? Well, we're still going Stargate, we're still building stuff in the main base. Still making Zelts, Mr. Probe, Mr. Probe sees the expansion up at the top, beautiful. Sees it, oh, thank goodness, okay. We're not up against some sort of nonsensical all-in, and everything kind of does the same stuff. We see plus one air, we see Corsairs get started, and the Zealots just march right across the map. Are you seeing this similar pattern? The probe identifies that there's only a small amount of lings. There was a brief worry, and you saw that worry expressed as a retreat. There's still a Zealot and a Probe blocking there in case of some sort of weird-ass run-by. Still Citadel gets started after the double plus one upgrade. But four Zealots, look at how much damage these Zealots are going to do. This is ridiculous. In fact, I, I turned on the vision for effort just to show. There's six Zerglings. You know, you have the Zerglings getting produced. That's it. Six Zerglings. That's it. That's literally the only stuff that Zerg has. This probe is such a legend. This probe gets microed to life so many times here. So these little attacks can actually do quite a lot. And there's this thing that happens in this big pressure phase that's just getting kicked off right now. You can smell weakness as Protoss and you can begin to jam in super hard. Same opening as before, we're going to see some different tactics occur, which will shape how our opening continues. Four gateways. Zealots kind of chill here. We got drones running every which way. Corsairs being annoying as hell. Another Corsair just popped out. Third Corsair getting built. That's it. These are the freshest Corsairs, man. And this probe is just such an all-star. Just dealing five damage here or there is more than enough to begin to chip away at the Zergling numbers massively. So suddenly we have more Zealots marching in. These are, s <laughs> these are slow Zealots, okay? Ugh, Zergling speed getting researched. Three gateways being added for a total of four. And this is, I think, one of the funniest moments of the game where Beast is just like, man, screw this. I'm killing your pool, dude. Keep in mind, the Corsairs are killing Overlords. You'll see that Effort is a negative supply, 40 of 28. More Zealots marching in. La, 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 la. Corsairs doing their thing. Look at the production tab. Probes. Zealots. Corsairs. What is the next thing that is typically up in the army oh it's a templar archives we gotta start plus two we don't have to begin building high templar yet because zealots are better than everything Doo -doo -doo. zealot speed protoss notably is not expanding right now protoss has decided that he can maybe kill zerg or at the very least deal a ton of damage to zerg it's okay to delay the third we don't want to establish more vulnerabilities for ourselves if we're going to be attacking a lot. Remember how passive those Corsairs were? Remember that phrase I used in the first opening video, don't force it? Bisu sure as hell did not force it. 
But in this game, he saw the opportunity. This is why you don't force it, is this moment right here. Where suddenly you go, whoopsie daisies, that's right. Okay, Scourge, yep, Scourge are pretty, Scourge are pretty scary. Now at this point, I was anticipating that Bisu would return back to something a little more traditional. Do an expand, rebuild his Corsair count, but there's a big danger here. I hope that you are detecting that your Protoss spider sense is going off where you're going, shit, I lost my Corsairs, that is so dangerous, he might just build Mutalisks and kill me. Oh my god, I might be about to lose. This is why attacking is so important. Not just conservation of Corsairs is important, but aggression of Zealots. So this is number-wise not an enormous number of Zealots. This is eight Zealots. Remember how I said a cannon in the main base is pretty normal? Well, there it is. But just eight Zealots moving up to this expansion with four at a time being literally rallied up there breaks this expansion. It actually breaks the base. Zealots are the scariest shit ever, dude. They're horrifying. They have the plus one upgrade. You're seeing the plus two upgrade getting started for Zealots. And there's this thing that Bisu notices right away where Bisu goes, huh, here is how you do reads as Protoss. If you are sending in a bunch of speed zealots with plus one, and the Zerg is responding with lots of lings and hydras, and it kind of feels like you can't fight, your first thought is, I got to retreat as Protoss. I got to get out of there. I'm losing this fight. The second thing you should think is, no way he could be doing anything else because I was throwing in hordes of man zealots in there. Look at the supplies, 73 to 49. You have a lot of muscle in the form of zealots. So if he's able to defend it at all, okay, cool. You retreat if he's defending it. But you also know he can't be doing anything else, man. You know, you know this. And so what Bisu does is he goes, oh shit, I am breaking through and there's nothing showing up. Nothing at all. More zealots streaming in. Alarm bells go off. Halts zealot production to build Templar to morph into Archons. You see how he's building cannons before the Mutalisks show up? This is a good read. This is a good read for Protoss. Same opening as the first game, but reading and guiding based upon what he sees. The Mutalisks show up. Corsair is there to defend. I think Effort just ducks out. Just heads for the hills, man. He has to say GG in like two seconds, if I remember correctly. Oh, the timer's right there. Yeah, he says GG like right now, man. Tries to do some nonsense with Lynx. Gets killed off. So, same opening as before. Different tactical gameplay. Let's take a look at a game between Shine and Movie that has two differences in opening. I just want to recap, as the start of this game happened, that we looked at Gateway first into Corsair Zealot. The straight and narrow path going for the standard units in large numbers efficiently, quickly. We're going to see two differences. We're going to see one, a Forge opening, which is, I think, the easier of the early expand openings. If you do this every single game, glory be. It's fantastic. Um, we're going to see the forge opening be a little different than the gateway opening, but we're also going to see not a follow-up with Zealous. We're going to see a Dark Templar follow-up. Because remember, in the big pressure phase, High Templar, Dark Templar, Speed Zealot, and Corsairs are all threats that the Protoss must, or excuse me, that the Zerg must account for equally. So let's go load this back up. First thing to note, First biggest, most dramatic difference. Forgive me. Give me a moment. Sheriff! Come here, Sheriff! Stop meowing at the door! Sheriff! Sheriff! Come here! Come on! Stop meowing at the door. I don't know why she meows at the door. She's decided that the hallway is the greatest place in the entire world. It has that crappy industrial carpet. She lies down on it. She lies sideways. And she claws her body along the ground. She doesn't even want to use her legs anymore. She just drags herself along the ground. Sheriff! 
Come here, stop staring at me. You know what she does is when I call to her, she comes and then she just stares at me like it's children of the corn or some shit. Anyways, first thing that we're seeing out of movie, um, who's doing this Forge First opening, very, very important difference. The, oh God, I'm going to have to go back to the start. Pylon built Scout immediately after Pylon. And then the forge gets built. Again, I'm not going on the specific timing of this. We're just building a forge pretty much as quickly as we think we can afford it. Bonk. And this probe is going to immediately go out. What do you think this is about? There's two important things, right? Probe sent out after pylon and second probe sent out. Why? Why? Well, it comes down to the fact that forge openings are safer but they're also inactive. If I build Zealots and I attack you, geez, you're Zerg, you better build Zerglings. Oh, I can micro them, I can juke you, I can scout, I can see stuff. Anything that is the word active, I can do. Cannons, they don't attack very well because they don't move. They're much like my cat that's meowing at the door. She's been in the heating pad napping for about nine hours today, and now she's like, Father, the carpet! What a jerk, seriously, okay? she's She is the photon cannon of cats. Protoss, if they open with photon cannons, they can't do active scouting with zealots. They can't apply pressure. So these scouts are to ensure that we get up enough cannons and that we can cut corners. So first probe, ah, okay, there's an overlord there. So now this probe can actually head home, great. Okay, what's the opening? What's the opening? That probe's gonna stay there. It's gonna generally wanna stay there just to build cannons, just in case, just in case. Because what if we're getting rushed? What if we're getting rushed? What if we're getting rushed? Oh, wait. I, I didn't show it, but on the mini map, Protoss got into the Zerg base and went, Oh, you did an overpool. Oh, you went overpool. Oh, no problem. Okay, it's, it's about two minutes and your pool's only just now done. Dude, I can build a Nexus right now. No problem. And Protoss counts one, two, three sets of Zerglings. Okay, so why Nexus first? Because you built your pool at a normal time. You can't attack me too quickly. So I can get a Nexus first. I see Zerglings. Not two, not four, but six Zerglings getting built. So I better build a cannon right away. In fact, I'm scared because I saw them go immediately, so I'm going to build two cannons. And then I'm going to build my gateway. Go th you can go through these permutations virtually instantly. Sean, what happens if I see an ultra-fast pool? Don't build the nexus. Build a cannon, and then a cannon, and then the nexus, and then a gateway. Or build cannon, cannon, gateway, nexus. Or build cannon, gateway, nexus. You gotta get that cannon down first if you see an ultra fast pool. Sean, what if I see a, a Zerg player who built a hatchery and then a pool? Dude, go forge, or excuse me, go nexus. Let me be clear. I'm assuming you've already built the forge. You should just always build a forge first. If you build a forge and you scout that Zerg player going hatch pool, dude, build your nexus, build a gateway build another pylon in your main base, then build the cannon. Like, you can delay the shit out of that cannon. In this game, this was right in between. Oh, dude, late pool, nexus, uh-oh, zerglings, cannon, cannon, and now gateway. Very intuitive. Once you've built the forge, you're asking, how soon am I going to be under threat? And if the answer's soon, get the cannon sooner. If the answer's not soon, get nexus and gateway sooner. Done. And we see that Movie, who sent all of these units over, or excuse me, Shine, who sent all of these units over, they arrived just as Movie's defense was established. Okay, so we have Protoss just running in circles, scouting in circles. Do I see a den? Big question. Is there a Hydralisk den getting built? Is there a den? Very notable fact, if you go for Forge Expands and you get this Nexus quite quickly, Often you don't really have the time or the money to build a second pylon. The nexus is done, which ups your supply. Um, 
the gateway was still reasonably fast, and you want to go ahead and get your uh, Stargate units as fast as possible, so you don't really have these pylons in the main base where you could hide that many structures. So if you're Zerg, you can sometimes scout this core. A lot of Protosses don't build that second cannon, and instead of the second cannon, they build a pylon in their main base. But, you know, eventually you'll have to build this extra pylon. Now, a big difference between... Big difference between forge openings compared to gateway first openings. You don't have a lot of zealots. The gateway has been done for a little bit of time. So I guess you could start building zealots, but you're just going to be worse than a gateway first player in every way. You're going to have lower numbers of zealots slower. They're going to come way, way later than a gateway opening build. So change your mindset. Change it from how do I get my zealots out in pressure to how can I get my cybernetics core out faster and do stuff with it. Hell, you built two cannons, dude. You built two cannons. You're defended as hell, man. Come on, Sheriff. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, my little cat. Notice how early that assimilator is. That assimilator is down in the main or at the expansion before the cybernetics core is even done. But still, you see the very fast Stargate. We're going to see uh, Fast Dragoon, which is kind of a cute move. If you see that there's a Zerg player with Zerglings outside of your base, you build one Dragoon in order to push that away or in order to, you know, kill off a Scouting Overlord. Mm -hmm. You're such a dick sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Hang out on my shoulder. So here we're going to see... Uh, so we've seen... I would describe this as a different build-up phase, right? We've seen the build-up that involves cannons for defense and passivity, as opposed to the gateway build that involved aggression. But still, we're getting the Corsairs pretty quickly. We're getting the double gas. We got a forge going. Let's watch what's going to change in this phase two. We've seen different phase ones. Let's look at what's different in phase two, okay? Stargate, getting built, plus one, getting researched, but instead of the plus one attack, yes, yeah, see here's the Dragoon being annoying, instead of the plus one attack, Movie, our Protoss hero, goes for a fast Citadel of a Dune. This is the Corsair DT style that made Bisu famous. In this opening, you still build Corsairs nonstop, but instead of going for the plus one Zealots, you go for very fast Dark Templar. Right when you start that Templar Archives, you plop down that second gateway. Corsair arrives, does what Corsairs do, scouts out, sees it looks like something vaguely normal. It's not a thorough scout. This is movie going, I hope to kill you as fast as possible. I hope to just, excuse me, I hope to kill an overlord as fast as possible before the Scourge show up. And watch this unbelievably incisive move. This is, this is gorgeous. So, Corsairs sweep out. Gateways, one DT, two DTs. Okay. Oh, cannon in the main base. You heard me talk about that. Let's not get distracted, shall we? Okay. What's missing from this opening? What's missing? What would we expect the Protoss player to want to do? Well, gosh, more gateways. Speed Zealots. He's going to need to get a High Templar. He needs to get all these pieces before he can go into this next phase, which involves Dragoons in large numbers or a third base. He really needs those. So, I'm going to get real excited about the Dark Templar Corsair stuff that's going to happen in a moment. I think this stuff is super sexy. I love Corsair DT openings. But let's not forget that we need to get a plus one Zealot upgrade. Or excuse me, a plus one weapons upgrade. We need to get Zealot legs. We need to get more gateways. Let's not forget... That those are the other important pieces. So there's the plus one going down. We're going to see Zealot legs started in just a moment. Oop, I think that one barely doesn't die. 
Oh, there's two more gateways going down. Look at that. That's lovely. He's increasing the gateway count. What's missing? There's only one more piece missing, and it's Zealot Legs! Where's Zealot Legs? I mean, I was watching this, and I was like, build the legs. Get 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 the damn legs. Get the legs. Get the legs. Get the legs. There they are. Zealot Legs. Oh, thank God. Oh, you see him getting started. So this is the move that Bisu made famous. Or, as I misspoke earlier, that made Bisu famous. <laughs> You know, this move made Bisu famous, and he made it famous. They just are sort of famousing each other up. Um, the idea behind Corsair Dark Templar at a real basic level is Corsair shoot down Overlord. Dark Templar kill everything. Good, very good. That is true. There is, in addition, a very threatening layer of Dark Templar's deal 40 damage, dude. And 40 is a lot of damage. So in this maneuver, you see Movie sending out his Dragoon, the three Zealots he built at the start of the game, and the two Dark Templar. And this winds up being a very threatening fighting force. Dark Templar one-shot Zerglings. Zealots are just scary as hell. And as this force moves in, Dark Templar also deal insane damage. Dark Templar 10 shot sunken colonies. Look at this beautiful base back home. We got Zealot Legs coming, we got Corsairs, there's a bunch of Zealots en route. These two High Templar, I don't really know what they're doing. They should probably be turned to an Archon, because there's, I mean, there's no Storm that's been researched at all. There's Storm getting researched right now, which, you know, I guess is fine. Big win. There, finally, there's the Archon. Yeah, Liquid look, look, look Shadow is still entering into games. So, if we contrast Phase 1 of Forge First compared to Bisu, we see there's much more passivity. But we also see there's a much earlier Gas Geyser and uh, a faster Cybernetics Core. If we contrast this Phase 2, well, in those Bisu games, Bisu went straight for Speed Zelts with his Corsairs. In this game, we see Dark Templar first, and then back into Speed Zealot. But we're still getting lots of Corsairs. What's the difference we're seeing in this Phase 3? What's the difference we're seeing in this Phase 3? We're seeing that instead of Protoss taking a third base on four gates, Protoss is just like, dude... I'm going to build two gateways in my main base and just kind of chill. And Movie actually takes quite a while to take a third. Now, why would Movie do this? Because Movie's like, shit, yeah, I killed his third, man. I don't have any pressure on me in the slightest. There's some weird action that comes in where Shine is a little alarmed and sends in a bunch of Mutalists to try to maybe abruptly end the game. But, you know, M Movie's still trying to do some cute stuff with his Zealot Archon force. And as bad as this might look, Movie actually wins this game pretty handily. He, he just reestablishes the defense afterwards and wins the game. It's kind of a somber note to end on because you don't know how the game ends. But this is the screen I want you to remember from this opening. I didn't end the video at the best time. This is how this opening works. You try to do some cool advantage stuff with um, all that crazy Corsair DT action. Let's look at a really weird game. This is on a map that has now been recently added to the map pool, Neo Jade, where you start on low ground, you have to expand on high ground. Here we see Bisu versus uh, Effort again. Bisu is going to do a different style. He goes for Forge first. We just got done with a Forge game, so what would we expect? Ah, uh, yes, a double probe scout. Cool. We would expect as many corners to be cut as possible. He sees the late pool. He builds one cannon because he does not see there is a large volume of Zerglings. This allows him to get a gateway quickly. Because he builds a gateway quickly, instead of building that second cannon, he can build a pylon in his main base. Immediately thereafter, we see the probe intensely scouting. Is there a cheese? Is there a cheese? Is there a, is there a, is there a cheese? Oh, no. Cool. Cybernetics core gets built. Instantly, a Stargate gets constructed. And here's the weird play that we're going to see out of Bisu. He's getting his plus one air weapons. 
He has very little defenses at his front. But hey, what do you know? Second Stargate. Okay. All right. What do we think about this? What do we think about this? Well, in the Zerg big defense phase, we've talked about the sort of multi-pronged pressure. Corsairs and Speed Zealots versus Corsairs and DTs. This is going hard on just big Corsairs. That's it. And then BC is going to do a really interesting Dark Templar drop play. And then he's still going to have to work his way back to Speed Zealots and the big battling phase. Where he's going to get lots of Dragoons. Let's watch him do that. First Corsair gets sent forward to make sure that ain't nothing going to try to kill him off. Alright, he sees that it's a standard fast Spire. Very little defenses. Still getting that plus one. We start, starting to see those hints of that normal looking play. There is a uh, Citadel of a Dune that's getting constructed right now. There it is. Zealot legs getting researched. Cool. Looks kind of like the same thing that we saw before. Is this the same game that I remember? Should be. Ah, eh, whatever. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was like, wait, am I going insane? There's the robotics facility getting started. So, Bisu's still doing some similar moves. He's just hurling zealots left and right. I mean, this is not a lot of zealots, right? Just a smidge. But he's bombing in here, being way more aggressive, killing off overlords because of the fact that he has two stargates making Corsair. He can even afford to lose one or two here or there. Speed Zealot was still researched. Plus one attack was still researched. These are some pretty important upgrades that Bisu's getting because... Um, this will allow him to get the plus two weapons quite swiftly. So there's Dark Templar 1. Here's some more Zealots moving out. And, you know, efforts kind of like, hell yeah, free Zealots, nice. So Bisu's still going to four gates, as we saw him do. He tries to do this cute stuff where he builds a pile on there, but that just gets murdered immediately. back to building zealots and remember in his instant push to corsair zealot in the first game that we watched he went for four gateways almost immediately and then did stuff but bisu spent time getting these corsairs bisu spent time getting dark templar and the robotics facility so bisu really doesn't have that many zealots on the ground no problem. Beast is just not going to go for a fast 30. He's going to instead go for more gateways. Take his third afterwards. And it's still this same shape of, you know, three bases, six to eight gateways. Observatory going down, surrounding out the rest of his buildings. Here's the DTs that go into the main base. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Effort notice is way late. Back in the base, Storm's just getting started. Remember how he said the Dragoons were sort of like the last thing that was gotted? Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing here. Despite this weird-ass double Stargate opening. Effort tries to defend with Overlords. No, you don't. <laughs> Seriously, the most annoying shit in the universe. And Bisu with his small amount of speed zealots, la la la, heading on out, building observers. God, this is so this is so infuriating to watch live. Oh my god, they're still killing everything. And so in these games, look, yeah, there's speed zealots and the cannons going down with the ultra fast third. Hey, there's a singularity charge. And Dragoons finally getting made is sort of like that last component. And it's easy to look at this and think of it as a Corsair DT opening, but the multi-pronged possibilities presented by getting those speed zealots so early, 
and then deciding to do these gigantic pressures from side to side. I mean, like, effort looks pathetic in these final fights. There was a storm over there that I missed because I'm not a, I'm not a world-famous observer. Just marches on in there. Just annihilates it with just speed zealot high templar. Oh my god. In the meantime... Ah, where'd those dragoons come from? Getting churned out now out of eight gateways. Third base is up, doing well. A lot of those hydralists die, so BC just goes in here and kills off all the overlords. They're all dying. <laughs> and in the, then in mid map, Effort tries to counterattack with hydras and just gets owned by dragoons. I mean, damn. Okay. Bisu is good at this matchup, and you can be too. So again, you can go for Gateway first, or Forge first. You can go for more direct styles uh, of Speed Zealot Corsair, more roundabout, like Dark Templar Corsair, or even Dark Templar Drop Corsair, things like this. There's different ways to do it, but you're eventually going to need to get the Speed Zealots and the Storm and the Corsairs. You really kind of need this trifecta, in particular these two, Corsairs and Speed Zealots. And then as you're getting that third base, that last move is to get a bunch of Dragoons out. And despite all these different ways to wiggle and worm your way forward, um, if you stick to this and you're getting confused and lost, just kind of use this as an anchor to bring you right on back. It's currently 7 p.m., which means it's time for me to sign out because uh, I have to leave at 7 p.m. Do you understand? <laughs> Smart. Um, thanks for watching this episode of Let's Learn StarCraft on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday going to be something a little special occurring. A little special occurring. Hasn't been announced yet, but I think you'll be happy if you're a Brood War fan. I think you'll be happy about Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. Shh. Just saying that. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. And then we'll do a Let's Run StarCraft on Thursday. Hell yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.